Hey y'all, I'm sorry, but this video does require a long intro and a bit of setup. We're going to get into homing and work offsets. Now, before I even get going, let me say that this assumes you have homing limit switches installed on your CNC router. If you don't have homing and limit switches installed, you're not going to get a whole heck of a lot out of this video. I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and fit homing limit switches to your CNC router. Now, before I got the Avid CNC, I had heard the phrase work offset, but I didn't really pay a whole heck of a lot of attention to it, mainly because I thought this was just overcomplicating something that was fairly easy to do. My first CNC router didn't have homing or limit switches on it, and I did have a couple of occasional problems that I soon found the cause of and worked around. But after installing those switches on my Gatton CNC, I found that they made the workflow go a lot easier. And now with the Avid CNC, using work offsets, I finally realized what I had been missing because they make the workflow go a lot quicker and a lot more accurately. So let's go on and get inside on the computer and I'll show you how I set up a very simple fixture, then came back out onto the CNC and applied that fixture and set up a work offset. Before we can even begin to understand how to use a work offset, we have to understand what it is. This black rectangle represents the physical limits of my CNC router table. The Y axis will not move any further forward than this line or any further rearward than this line. Similarly, the x-axis will not move any further left than this line or any further right than this line. These are the physical limits of the machine. When I home my CNC router, first thing that will happen is the z-axis will move to the top of its travel until it triggers that homing switch, then back off a predetermined amount, then the x and y-axis will move simultaneously until the X is all the way over to the left side of the machine and the gantry is all the way up to the front of the machine. They will trigger their respective homing switches, back off a predetermined amount. Then Mach 4 will set my X and Y0 in machine coordinates to right here they will be at zero. This is also known as the home position. This is what's meant by homing the machine. Now, every machine manufacturer is different. Some machines home to the front left corner, some home to the front right, the right rear, the left rear. It doesn't matter where they physically home the machine to. What matters is it is homed and the control software knows where the center of the bit is in that spindle. Now, why doesn't the software remember from the last time you use it? Well, it might, but the software doesn't know if you have come along and manually moved your gantry backward and your x-axis off to the side to get it out of the way while you're doing something down here. So every time you turn on the machine, you need to home the machine. It only takes a couple of seconds. Click one button and it's done. You'll notice I have a piece of work material mounted here in a convenient location. When we set our XY datum position in our CAD CAM software, we are setting this zero, the workpiece zero. 
we're not setting the zero to the physical machine itself. So we place our material, we mount it in a convenient location, and we set our x, y, zero on our material. What a work offset is, is the difference between x, y, zero and our workpiece x, y, zero in machine coordinates. So if I mount this piece of material here, and it happens to be 8 inches to the right of my x0 in machine coordinates, and 3 inches back from the front of the machine in machine coordinates, that gives me a work offset of 8 inches in x and 3 inches in y. In machine coordinates, this corner is 8 inches in X and 3 inches in Y. Once we know that, we can set up Mach 3, Mach 4, UCCNC, or most of the other CNC control softwares to remember this position. Now knowing what a work offset is, I set about creating a simple fixture in order to be able to use that work offset. And this was nothing more than a series of one quarter inch diameter holes that I'm going to drill into the surface of my spoil board. These are placed along the Y and along the X. The Y they are two inches apart on center, and the center of each of these dowel holes is one inch in from the left side of the spoil board. In the X direction, I made it a little bit differently in that I needed to make sure these holes drilled into a, one of the MDF strips that makes up my spoil board and didn't end up in the gap above a piece of the T-track. So I took some measurements outside on my spoil board and placed these holes accordingly. Again, they are one inch up on center from the front edge of the machine bed. I've drawn a couple of guides in here to show you that once these holes are drilled, I can use some precision ground dowels in these holes to place a piece of material so that the corner sits right here at this intersection of these two guides. As long as I keep one straight edge up against these dowels on the left side or down against these dowels along the bottom, depending upon how I'm orienting my material, I can make sure that the material is in this location every time I mount a piece of material. So switch over here to the toolpath tab and we can see that I created a simple drilling toolpath, drilling a half inch deep using a quarter inch two flute upcut spiral end mill, created a simple drilling toolpath and now if I preview that toolpath it drills the holes in those positions. I then saved my G-code, took it outside on the machine, set my X, Y, zero to the corner of my spoil board at the front left corner and ran this toolpath. Let's go outside on the CNC and see the result of that toolpath. Out here on the CNC router, we can see the result of running that toolpath. Now, again, this is probably the simplest form of fixturing you're going to run across, but it does work very well. We have five holes drilled parallel with my X axis and five holes drilled parallel with my Y axis. And I'm going to use these 
precision ground one quarter inch diameter steel dowels to locate my piece of material along this, these two lines of holes. I'll put one here and another one here and that will locate the corner of my workpiece. I'm going to put another one down here and another one up here. Now when I mount my material I can just make sure that I have th this edge up against these two dowels right here and if the piece is not square I want at least one of these dowels to touch this bottom edge here. Because I'm working with this material in a vertical orientation I want to make sure this edge is pushed tightly up against these two dowels. It's not as important that I have contact on both of these. As you can see it's slightly out of square. So I need to make sure I'm shoved up against these two dowels and pulled down to where I'm at least touching one or the other of these two. That will make sure that my material is nice and straight on the table and it's in now in a known location on my work offsets. Let me get this mounted and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. now with my piece mounted securely on the table I no longer need these locating dowels so I can go ahead and remove them so I'm not in danger of running into one and I now have a clear path. When I first set up this work offset I did basically what you just saw me do. I got a piece of material and put dowel pins in place along my X and Y, mounted the material just like this. Then I got into Mach 4, which I will show you in just a second, and went up into my Offsets tab. The default offset with most control software is G54. That is what you're most commonly going to use without even knowing it. But almost all controller software have the ability for you to use other offsets and keep them permanently in place until you decide to overwrite one. All of this is predicated on the fact that you have homed your machine before you've done anything else. If you don't home your machine before you do anything else, none of this will work. When I set up this work offset, this fixture offset, I set it up as a G59. So I went over here and clicked Apply G59 Offset. Went back to Program 1. And that's when I took my three-way touch plate here and brought it up onto my work material and set my X and Y zero. When I had set my X and Y zero using the touch plate, it set that work offset on G59, which is still in Mach 4 and will stay there until I overwrite it. Go back into my Offsets tab and if we look, you can see that my G59 offset has an X value of 2.7987, a Y value of 8.9851. Those two numbers will never change. Z is going to change every time I change bits. What does all this mean? 
what this means is come back into program one and let me move you out so you can see this as it happens no matter what bit I have in my spindle in this case I have my surfacing bit because that's what I'm going to do surface this material no matter what bit I have in my spindle all I have to do is come over here to Mach 4 and click on go to work XY0 and it will automatically wrap it over to where the center of the bit is on this corner and there it is I can shut down the CNC router I can shut down the controller I can turn everything off go in the house go to sleep come back the next day and as long as I have homed my machine I can go into that G59 work offset and the center of whatever bit I put in here will be lined up with that corner. This is very handy if you do a lot of repetitive work. Now we can make more complex fixtures and we can create more fixture offsets. There are six standard offsets built in to most control software. But there are 254 other offsets that are also available. I would say to check with your machine's manufacturer or your controller software publisher for instructions on how to access these G54 through G59 work offsets and the 254 other offsets that you have available. So, with my X and Y zero established to surface this piece of material, I can now load G code, set my Z zero, and run this toolpath, and it will be in the correct position. And after a few passes of that uh, toolpath, it's nice and flat. I can go ahead and pull this up, get it off of the table, flip it over, and load my first G-code file for the project that I'm going to be doing with this piece of material. My point in all of this is that work offsets can be very, very handy if you tend to use one section of your spoil board quite a bit, do a lot of the same size projects, or just want a quick, easy way of setting up a location that you can return to should the power go out or should you do a lot of repetitive cuts. So hopefully that didn't confuse anybody too much. I'll give you a brief summary of what all I just did and how I use it. Okay, so the first thing I did was create the pattern to drill these fixture holes in my spoil board, as you saw. Brought the G-code out, turned everything on, then homed the machine. That's the first thing I always do. Then I took my three-way touch plate and put it right here on the corner of the spoil board. And this is where I set my X, Y, and Z zero to drill these fixture holes. Then to create this G59 offset, I took my dowels and inserted them like so. 
then firmly mounted a piece of scrap material in this corner. Now it's crucial at this point that you have homed your machine because we're about to set the X and Y zero over here as our G59 offset. Once this is firmly mounted, I can come over here and remove these dowels, then go into my offsets tab in Mach 4, click on apply G59 offset, then bring my touch plate back up here onto this corner and set my XY zero. Once that is set, Mach 4 will remember this fixture offset slash work offset. Then I can take that down, put my tool in, set my Z0, and carve the first part of the project. And now anytime I want to come use this fixture and reference off of this corner, I can Start the controller, turn on Mach 4, home the machine. That is crucial. If I don't home the machine, this will not work and the gantry could go in any direction. Once the machine is homed, I will put my dowels back in the spoil board, then bring my piece of work material over, reference off of these dowels, and mount it securely. I can then take the dowels out. I can then go into my offsets tab in Mach 4 and apply the G59 fixture offset. With that offset applied, I can click go to XY0 and the bit will wrap it over here to this corner. I can then move the bit up into this area here, bring my touch plate back up, and set my Z0 for that bit. Then I'm ready to load my G code and run that project. So I hope that summary clears up any confusion you may have had. Now, Yes, I use the Avid CNC version of Mach 4, but just about every other controller software has their own method for creating and saving work offsets and fixture offsets. So I would strongly encourage you to either contact your machine manufacturer or your controller software publisher for specific instructions on how to do this same thing on your machine. Now, I know there's no way I answered every question that you may have on this issue. So, this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me anything about what I've presented here in this video or any of my previous videos. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. These live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, click the little bell icon right next to it. Then click it a second time and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my channel members. Thank you all very much. If you'd like information on how to become a channel member, click that join button right next to the subscribe button. A panel will pop up and a video will play that will tell you all about channel membership here on my YouTube channel. So I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, 
whether you become a channel member or not. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.